Na maanden van vrees vir die COVID-19 pandemie is daar uiteindelijk een eindstof geskep. Ongelukkig doen valse inlichting die ronde wat mense huiverig maak om die eindstof te neem. So net dus met medische kinders gesels oor die feite rondom die eindstof. Coronavirus is hier. Hoe hy hier gekom het maak nie vir my saak nie. Ek moet deel met sy gevolge en ek sien hoe hy mense bitter siek maak en hoe mense doodgaan. We've educated you for a long time. We have the vaccines now and we need you to make the decision to, to help protect not only yourself through the vaccine but your immediate family, yes. your neighbors and your community and then ultimately uh, the whole city. The government in itself wouldn't be using state funds to invest in vaccines if they didn't think it would benefit the entire population. What the vaccine does, and this is imperative to know, is that it avoids severe disease, it's definitely going to reduce your risk of hospitalization, and it will absolutely reduce your risk of death. Dr. Rister Ron, a internist by Mediclinic Durbanville, sê die vaccine is die enigste effectieve manier ons kan keer om die siekte te kry en voorkom die kanse vir jou om die siekte op te doen met plus minus 50%. Die inenting stimuleer net jou immuunselse so die die lichaam het dat as die virus inkom is daar iets wat om kan aanval en om kan bind en keer dat hy so vinnig verdeel. So as jy bang is vir enige newe effekte van die eindstoffe, wees het duizend keer meer bang vir die effekte van die coronavirus. Die virus, toe hy ontstaan het, het mense gesê dat ons oorreageer, dit gaan nie soos een griepvirus wees, toe hy het gesê, dus uh, hy is ontwikkel in een laboratorium en is, uh, hy is ontwikkel vir wat die doeleinde is ook al. Die belang is dat die virus is met ons, dat die coronavirus uh, is ons nou bezig om aan die einde van die derde vlaag te kom, maar ons het een geweldig hoeveelheid sterftes in Zuid-Afrika as gevolg van die coronavirus, so dit is nie die selfde as griep nie. As ek uh, wondermiddel gehad het vir corona, en ons hoop dat kom een antivirale middel wat het gaan ons gaan gee, dan is in eentig nie nodig nie. Dr. Zahid Badrudin, die stad Kaap, stad sy meikelid vir gemeenskapsdienste en gezondheid, sê die verkeerde inlichting oor die virus wat verspreid word. Een geweldige impak het op die gezondheidsstelselse pogings om mense tegen die virus te beskerm. It prevents and often discourages people from coming to this, the, any of the 80 facilities that are available in our city at the moment. Why? Because it inserts this fear, this uncertainty, this mistrust uh, in the vaccination. Uh, relating to what what is the actual vaccination medium that's going inside of you. People fear that uh, it's the actual virus that is being injected. And we know that's not the case. In some WhatsApp messages, people suggesting that limbs are falling off. It's utter nonsense, utter nonsense. What we do know is, obviously there'll be some small pain uh, for a day or two. Obviously you're going to have an immune response. You're going to feel tired, fatigue, uh, you know, some temperature. Uh, often people uh, report that that's normal mm. uh, for a vaccine. It happens when you take the flu vaccine as an example. What is that process? That process is your body fighting off what is being introduced to prepare it for any potential infection. Then on top of that, the routine nonsense that we're seeing, the chips that's going inside your body, Bill Gates is watching you. So knowing all of this misinformation, my message to residents will be only trust what is coming from a reliable source. Hy sê, een van die grootste uitdagings wat hulle probeer oorkom, is die rol wat godsdienstleier speel, om inwoners te ondersteun en aan te moedig om die eindstof te neem. Recently we were in uh, Mitchell's Plain, and we knocked on, on many, many doors, uh, encouraging people to come and access the pop-up vaccination site that we had. But many would say, my God would protect me from the virus, regardless of the fact that people have just been destroyed charged from uh, the hospital who have had the virus, their own family members. And the religious leaders mustn't play uh, a discouraging role. We must work together because people, residents, trust those uh, religious leaders and understandably so. They play an important role in our community, but they also have an important responsibility to help keep our communities safe. The choice now is with our residents and I really hope that they come and meet us halfway because we are waiting for them. Mm. Dr. Bilal Abdul Ghafour, a doctor wat specialiseer in pulmonologie, sê as gezondheidswerkers vind hulle die verkeerde inlichting wat verspry word rondom die eindstof baie ontmoedigend, omdat die feite duidelik is dat die eindstof wel werk.
we are working on the front line. We see patients die on a daily basis from this disease. And we know that there is a huge benefit in vaccination. Uh, I use the simple analogy is that uh, my accounting gets done by an accountant. Mm. I don't try and do my own tax return and I don't try and mess with it. For the same reason, I think you should, uh, the public should be trusting uh, the healthcare sector in making decisions. Hy sê, sommige mense is bekommerd dat die eindstof groot side effects gaan hee. There's a concern that some females felt that the vaccine may cause infertility, uh, but that doesn't, that it does not hold true. There were concerns that it may alter your DNA and change your structural DNA. And I think just understanding how a vaccine works and how it mounts the response, one would quickly realize that these vaccines actually don't involve your DNA. It involves a different part called a spike protein and RNA rather, which are messenger proteins rather than DNA which forms the genetic code of your body. So it's really not going to change the structure of your body. Mm. Other concerns have been that if you've already had COVID, there's no need to vaccinate. And that's not true because the antibodies from uh, having COVID wane after a few months and therefore you should still be vaccinated. Uh, some people feel that after vaccination, they don't have to wear masks any longer. And that doesn't hold true, not until a significant proportion of the population has been fully vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So yes, the, 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 the theories behind it have been quite, uh, quite varying and quite ludicrous at times. Yeah. Yeah. Allemaal moet ingeen word, sê die dokter, want dit is die enigste optie om die verspreiding van die virus te bekam. In the international guidelines, the only patients who cannot be vaccinated are those who have a proven anaphylactic reaction to any component of the, of, the, of the vaccine. And those patients are few and far between because even in patients who have anaphylaxis or allergic reactions, they may not even be allergic to any of the components in that vaccine. The other patients that need to be consulted by their doctors before vaccinating are those with autoimmune diseases. But there is no literature and no evidence that patients with autoimmune diseases should not be vaccinated. And most of our patients have been vaccinated without any complication. I would go as far as say, just as it is uh, law to wear a seatbelt, I think it should be law to take the initiative because to, to be vaccinated. Because you're going to reach a point where the doctors do not see the need to look after people who come in who are unvaccinated. Because why should we? To date, I have not have had a fully vaccinated patient die on the ventilator. Every one of them who have been fully vaccinated or at least 14 days after their last vaccine have actually come out alive from this hospital. Dr. Farid Abdullah, a consultant and intergeneeskundige specialist by the Brackenguide COVID facility, says that he comes too late and he is never sick until he is sick. It's only when they realize the scope of what's happening around us that you know, the regret eventually sets in is that I should have been vaccinated and, you know, I should have, I should have perhaps gotten the shot a little earlier. But that it's very difficult because there's so much misinformation mm. out there. As I said that, you know, we live in, in an age where um, I don't think that information has ever been as freely available as it is today. And everything is on the tips of the fingers, but people don't realize that with, you know, the, the social media platforms that are out there, the messaging services that are out there, we almost feel like we have an inherent need to want to share. But what you don't realize is by actively sharing, you may be sharing the wrong information. He said he has played a role to make sure that the evidence is for people to take the drugs, but with the amount of people and the percentage of people who are thus ingeent, has not yet been known as herd immunity. In simple terms, if you've got four people in a room, if three of the four people are vaccinated, then the fourth person who's not vaccinated is automatically protected because the others are vaccinated. It's a simple way to understand it. But with herd immunity, the more people that are vaccinated, the more likely it's going to be that those people are going to be protected against the virus. And for the small population that cannot get vaccinated for whatever other reason, um, that cannot um, take the virus or, or, excuse me, cannot take the vaccine or, you know, may not uh, be able to take it immediately, they will also inherently be protected 
because everyone else is protected. So what we're actually looking at is probably around 75 to 80 percent of the population needs to be vaccinated before we will reach what's known as you know, vaccination herd immunity. Een van die gesprekke wat hy met sy patiënte voer is dat hulle ingeënt moet word nadat hulle die siekte oorleef het. The way we explain it and to explain it simply, if you've not had a vaccine shot, the moment your disease process has cleared, which means your symptoms have gotten better, we would then advise that you get your first shot after 30 days. If you've received one shot already, as in the Pfizer vaccine, um, then after you've completed your 10 days of isolation, and by isolation we mean uh, you've completed the 10 days and further on you don't have any fever or any symptoms and you're feeling well, you should be able to get your second shot. That in itself confers more protection and still we know that that protection may last much longer than the natural protection there. So absolutely for all those reasons, um, as I've said before to many of my, my juniors that are around here, none of us are safe until all of us are safe. And none of us are going to be safe until the majority of South Africans um, are vaccinated.